Srinivas Acharya was born in 1530 and on the full moon day of the month of Vaishak in the village of Kanti, which lies just north of Agradvipa in the district of Nadia. His father, Gangadara Bhattacharya, was a Brahmin of the Rarhar class. The Bhakti Ratnaka describes the event as follows. When Mahaprabhu took sannyas in Katwa, Gangadara was overcome with grief and began to cry constantly while calling out the names Hachaitanya, Hachaitanya. When other devotees saw him intoxicated in divine love for Mahaprabhu, they nicknamed him Chaitanya Das, a name which stuck with him for the rest of his life. Chaitanya, Chaitanya, and he became Chaitanya Das. <laughs> Chaitanya Das had no desire for the things of this world, but one day, he suddenly felt a strong wish to have a son, and he told this to his wife Lakshmi Priya. She responded by telling him to immediately go to Puri to ask Mahaprabhu for his blessings. A couple left for Puri. They were living in Bengal. So they said, we want to have a child. So they said, why don't we go to Puri, thousand kilometers? to get the blessings by foot, by foot, no? Uh, to get the blessings of Mahaprabhu. The couple left for Puri, stopping for a few days at the house of Balaram Vipra, Lakshmi Priya's father, in Jajigram. When they arrived in Puri, Chaitanya Das and his wife paid their obeisances to Mahaprabhu, but before they could speak, The Lord Himself said, understanding their desire, Jagannath Deva will surely fulfill all your desires. The other devotees were curious about what desire Mahaprabhu was talking about, and they asked His servant Govinda. But before He could say anything, Mahaprabhu called Govinda and gave him the answer. Chaitanya Das desires to have a Indeed, his wife will give birth to a jewel of a son who will be named Trinivas. He will be the manifest form of my love and will be non different from me. He will increase everyone's enthusiasm for devotion. Through Rupa and others, I will bring scriptures into the world, and through Srinivas, shall distribute them. At that time, the Lord called Kubinta and said in a deep voice from a trance state, The Brahmin has come here desiring a son. He will soon have one whom he will name Srinivas. I will bring scripture into the world through Sri Rupa and others, and these jewel-like books will be distributed by Srinivas. Srinivas is the embodiment of pure love for me. All minds will be enthused upon seeing him. Once they had received Mahaprabhu's blessing, Chaitanya Das and his wife returned to their home. And when the auspicious moment came, a son was born to them. 
Chaitanya immediately offered the child to Mahaprabhu. The child went through the usual rituals of the first feeding of solid food, name giving, hair cutting, etc. All the local associates of Mahaprabhu, such as Govinda Ghosh and the residents of Sri Kanda, Narahari and Raghunandan, poured down affections, affectionate blessings on the child. <coughs> Srinivas Acharya was devoted to his parents. He was fortunate to hear both Mahaprabhu's divine glories as well as Radha Krishna's Vindavan pastimes from his father. The two of them would go into ecstatic state as they discussed transcendental topics. Srinivas' mother trained him in Kirtan. He studied grammar, literature and poetic theory from Dhananjaya Vikyabhashpati and quickly acquired mastery of these subjects. No long afterwards, Srinivas' father died. The loss of his father, of his devotee father's association, greatly, greatly affected Srinivas. But the other devotees made a concerted effort to console him and his mother in their grief. <laughs> Srinivasa took his mother and moved from Chakanti to his maternal grandfather's house in Jajigram, where the villagers were overjoyed to see him. Shortly thereafter, he went to visit Narahari Sharakar in nearby Srikant. From Narahari, he learned this Srikanda was recently restored there is a beautiful temple which was made and the old deities of Sri Kanda there well established again. This is one of the Bhaktivinanda Charity Trust <coughs> activities. <coughs> From Narahari he learned that Mahaprabhu would shortly be ending his earthly pastime. This news made Srinivas determined to see the Lord before it happened. He quickly returned to Judge Grom and took permission from his mother to make the trip to Puri. He then joined the devotees on the annual pilgrimage. It was the fifth day of the waxing moon. You know, see, they would go yearly to Puri. It was their annual pilgrimage to go from Bengal to Puri to see Lord Jagannath and his Rasa Yatra. <coughs> Before arriving in Puri, however, <laughs> the news arrived that Mahaprabhu had indeed entered his ila. Srinivasacharya <laughs> fainted. at the news, and when he came back to consciousness, he decided to commit suicide. <laughs> However, the Lord himself appeared to him in a dream and told him to complete his journey to Puri. Once in Puri, he again had the dream in which he saw Jagannath, Subhadra and Balaram, as well as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, with his associates. Before arriving in Puri, however, the news arrived in Mahaprabhu. The incarnation of Mahaprabhu's pleasure potency, Srila Gadada Pandit, met him, and both of them were embarrassed. Both of them were immersed in the ocean of ecstasy. Srinivas also met Raman, Rai Ramananda, Paramananda Puri, Shiki Maiti, Sarvabhauma Pandit, Rakeshwara Pandit, 
Govinda Charya Rapal did. Govinda Charya and received blessings from them all. Srinivas Acharya stayed for some time in Puri, hearing Srimad Bhagavatam from Gadada Pandit Goswami. Gadada then told him to return to Goda. When Srinivas returned, he heard that Advaita Acharya and Nityananda Prabhu had also disappeared. Once again, he determined to end his life. But the two Prabhus appeared to him in a dream to, to a switch to calm his grief and to... and they gave, had him to give up this intention. When he arrived in Navadvip, Srinivas was once again plunged into the morass of sorrow mm -hmm. at the loss of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Once Sivadananda Prabhu saw him in this condition and approached Vishnu Priya, asked her to grant an audience to Srinivas and bless him. Srinivas Acharya Vasachari was amazed to see the intense renunciation and deep faith of Mahaprabhu's widow. While in Navadvip, he had a dream of Sachi Devi and received blessings from her. Srinivas then wandered throughout Bengal, going to all the Sri parts of the associates of Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu, seeking their blessings. He visited Chantipur, Kardaha, Kanakula, Krishna Naga, Srikanda, etc., and met Murari Gupta, Srivas Pandit, Ramoda Pandit, Chuklambal, Pramachari, Gadada Das, Parameshwari Das, Janava Devi, Vashuda Devi, Virabhadra, Aviram Thakur, Narahari Shankar Thakur, Raghunandan Thakur, all these great personalities witnessed Srinivas' intense devotion and told him to go to Vindavan. Srinivas then went to his mother and asked her repeatedly for permission to make the trip, which she could not refuse when she saw his great eagerness. Srinivas Acharya arrived in Braja. That's when he made this temple here. Srinivas then traveled to Agra Dvip, Katva, Maureshwara, Eka Chakra, to Kashi, Ayodhya, and Prayak. He spent a long time traveling and visiting all these holy places before finally arriving in Braj. There he heard that Rupa Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, Kashi, Shwara Pandit, and Raghunath Bhatta Goswami had all disappeared. Raghunathas Goswami, Gopalbhata Goswami, and Jiva Goswami, who are still living. However, Srinivas met all three of them and received their blessing. He was initiated by Gopalbhata and took instruction in the Vaishnava scriptures from Jiva Goswami. In great affection for Srinivas, Jiva commended him to his deities, Radha Damodha. Srinivas met Raghunath Das and Krishna's Kaviraj and Radha Gunda and received their blessing. One day Sri Jiva heard Srinivas explain a verse from Ujjwala Dinamani and was so impressed by his erudition that he bestowed the title Acharya upon him. Jiva also gave the title Takur to Narottama and Shamanam, mm -hmm. to Duki Krishna Das. Jiva ordered Srinivas to tour the sites of pilgrimage in the Raja area with Raghava Goswami. <coughs> they returned to Bengal. After Srinivas had attained mastery in the Gaudiya Vaishnava scriptures, 
Sri Jiva and other Vaishnavas in Braja ordered him, Narutam and Chamananda, to take manuscript of these invaluable books back to Bengal in an ox cart. They set off on the Shukla Panchami of Agrahayan Mats. It was a long and dangerous trip, but they were able to cover the greater part of the distance without any trouble. <laughs> Upon arrival in the Hindu kingdom of Banavishnupur, they felt that the danger was over. However, the rumor had reached the capital of Vishnupura that a rich merchant was traveling to Puri with a valuable cargo of merchandise. The ruler of the kingdom led a gang of highway robbers, and when he heard that the cargo of great value was passing through his territory, he asked an astrologer to divine the truth of the rumors. The astrologer confirmed that he, this was indeed a cargo of great value. The king immediately sent a group of robbers to steal it, specifying that they should kill no one. The robbers first worshipped the goddess Chandi, then sent out a spy who returned to tell them that everyone in the group accompanying the ox cart was sleeping in exhaustion after eating their night meal. The robbers thought this was securely Chandi's mercy that a golden opportunity Ask him how he could have made such a mistake. The astrologer answered, I can't understand it. Every time I have made my calculation, I came up with the same conclusion. This chest is full of priceless. <clears throat> priceless jewels. It is incredible. I don't know why my calculation have gone wrong. The mere sight. The mere sight of the holy books had a purifying effect on the king. However, and he regretted having stolen, uh, having stolen them. Indeed, he desired to meet with the Acharya of the book. That night he had a dream in which the Grantacharya appeared to him in Radha Damodha. See, many things come to my mind when I read this because these are very intensive, beautiful Vaishnava love stories. <coughs> they are the they are the union and separation of Srinivas Acharya, the six Goswamis, Naratam Dastaku, and also Srinivas Acharya's disciple Ramachandra. He was also very deeply immersed in the devotional service. <laughs> and Srinivas uh, Thakur's daughter, Himalata Thakurani, whose Samadhi is also in here, she became the spiritual master uh, or the she became the leader of the Vishma Vaishnava Raj Shabha of the, these days. Well, all of these are very intensive meetings and separations which they took place in those days. So I can understand that so many of you have read the books of Prabhupada and then you came to the temple looking for Srila Prabhupada and you found that Srila Prabhupada wasn't living anymore. So this is what I feel is similar. Then you find out more Sri Maharaj also gone away. So the separation of devotees or the devotees in South America traveling to, to Peru in, in the Mela time to meet with all the devotees. This is all so similar and so close. And 
while we live this, we are also feeling the pains of Kalpa Viksha Prabhu, who just left us. Kalpa Viksha Prabhu just went to the big Mela in Cusco, where there was a, <coughs> a, a Jagannath Inti Raimi, like a, a historical festival which practically was started by our Damodama Raj together with Mahadeva and, and the devotees of Cusco. And so Kalpa Viksha, he went there and on the way back, he wanted to take sannyas. Our Kalpa Riksha had lived with his family all his life, but he was one of the old devotees of, of Krishna from Chile. He had been with me and Guru Deva in the old Puente Alto Mandir, and I think at that time he was the Bhakta leader. reaching to so many people. Well, that Kalpa Riksha, he went to Cusco and then as he came back to Chile, he just, I think in the, in the, in the bus station, he had a heart attack and died. So in this way, our God brothers, our God sisters, our heartfelt friends, they're also coming and going, traveling, disappearing, it's a very, I feel it's the same Leela which we're reading here. That they considered killing themselves. Can you imagine? Great devotees. They were so depressed that because they were taking the original books written by the six Goswamis to Bengal. Why? Because in Vendam they didn't have people to copy those books. But the devotees in Bengal had asked, please send us some of those nectar books. Finally they said, you send all the books here, we will copy them. Don't forget, there's no book printing at that time. The Sri Vaishnavas felt some hope. and abandoned their suicidal intention. Srinivasachai decided to remain in Vishnu Buddha in the hope of finding the books, but he sent Narottam to Kinduli and Shamananda to Orissa. While staying in Vishnupura, Vishnupura, you know, these, these cities, <coughs> these cities are very interesting, i tell you something. In Vishnupur, recently one devotee, he opened the temple and he came to me and he said, I want to make this, um, I want to make this uh, a temple of the uh, Vishwa Vaishnava Shaba. And he also asked me to give sanyas to him. He's a disciple of Srila Bhakti Balabdhita Maharaj. I'm hesitating, but at the same time, I don't want to discourage him. In February, we're going to have our opening of our center in Vishnupur. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? I can't believe it. It's too much. It just happened to me one month ago in one of the festivals. He approached me and said, I made the temple, I have a guest house, everything is ready. Only you have to come and inaugurate. So, this, what we are reading here, we are living it. Vishnupur is very close to uh, Bordwan. It is not far away from Mayapur and it's also close to uh, the place where all our deities are carved by a wonderful uh, <coughs> deity carver. 